If you ever saw a cow standing on a rooftop, you'd be entitled to wonder how it got there. That's how archaeologists sometimes feel about the discoveries they make. It's also how scientists sometimes feel about those same discoveries. Not everything we discover about the distant past makes sense to our modern eyes, but you're about to find out in this video. We start with the discovery that was made in Gibraltar in September 2021. There, a 40,000-year-old mystery is being unraveled in a place that archaeologists have nicknamed the Chamber of Secrets. The chamber is actually Vanguard Cave, which played host to a tribe of Neanderthals thousands of years ago. The entrance to the cave has spent most of the time since then sealed off by sand. The remains of griffin vultures, hyenas, lynx, and large whelks have been found inside the cave, all of which are thought to have been brought there by Neanderthals. The presence of our near-human evolutionary cousins is given away by the milk tooth of a four-year-old. There's also a carving inside the cave that may also have been made by the Neanderthals, although it's possible that the artwork was added by humans who occupied the cave at a later stage. 40,000 years ago is an important point in history for scientists. It's about the time that Neanderthals vanished off the face of the planet. Maybe this cave might offer us some clues about where they went. Almost every country in the world has an ancient tradition that's specific to its territory. In the British Isles, one of those traditions is hiding shoes inside walls. There are countless examples of old shoes being found during renovation projects in the UK, such as a pair of 1840s Blucher ankle boots that turned up when Laura Potts renovated her Georgian property in Norwich in 2014. The footwear had been left inside a secret cavity in the building's chimney wall. According to history professor Malcolm Gaskell, the Brits of the 18th and 19th centuries believed that leaving shoes inside their walls was a way of warding off evil spirits or preventing them from entering a home. Nobody's quite sure why this tradition started or why people believed that shoes had magic properties. But one theory is that they were thought to contain the essence of their owners because they were molded to fit their feet. It's doubtful that people still believed this by the mid-18th century, so by that point it's more likely the shoes were walled in either as a time capsule or perhaps even as a practical joke by the builders. Human sacrifice was, unfortunately, a common practice among many of the ancient civilizations that lived in South America in the pre-Hispanic times. Take Kengo Temple in Cusco, Peru, for example. According to archaeologists, this was a place of sacrifices and death rituals. It's thought that the temple was carved out of the rocks by the Inca during the 15th or 16th century, although as with most ancient South American stone monuments, it's difficult to say for sure. The word Kengo means zigzag and is a reference to the crooked canal that's carved into the side of the temple. Theories about the liquid that once ran down this canal include holy water, corn beer, and blood. Numerous chambers have been carved into the monolith, including a very elaborate one with 19 niches that shape like an amphitheater. The purpose of the amphitheater is unknown, but it's known that star, sun, and moon gods were worshipped here. That makes it possible that the amphitheater is where the sacrifices to these mighty gods were made. There's also some evidence that people were embalmed at the site, which we suppose is better than sacrificing them and then simply throwing them away. A 10-foot-tall geoglyph of a bull that was found in Siberia in early October 2021 has been claimed by archaeologists as the first of its kind in the region. The experts believe it to be around 4,000 years old, which dates it to the Bronze Age and makes it even older than the famous Nazca Lines in Peru. It's also 1,000 years older than the White Horse in Uffington, England. The artwork was created using sandstone and lines of pebbles and was probably designed to be viewed from above. There's a large early Bronze Age burial site close to here in the village of Kondergy, so the bull might be symbolically associated with it. Sadly, it's thought that the front half of the geoglyph was destroyed by a road construction project during the 1940s, 
before archaeologists had the chance to examine it or even knew it was there. Rock carvings of bulls have been found in the surrounding area before, but this is the first geoglyph of a bull, or indeed an animal of any kind, that's been recorded thus far. About 3,000 years ago, the Shand Dynasty residents of China began to carve terrifying animal faces in the sides of their ritual vessels. Nobody knows why they started doing this. For a long time, the only thing that historians knew about the beasts was that they were called Tawatai. The discovery of a lone inscription in the 20th century later revealed that the Chinese believed them to be man-eating monsters. Where the idea of the mythical creature came from is a mystery. The carvings are only ever found in the ritual bronze vessels of the era, which heavily implies a connection to either death or the afterlife. One idea is that the Tawatai guards the gates of the underworld, much like Cerebus, the multi-headed god that guards the gates of Hades in Greek mythology. The creature has both horns and fangs and sometimes looks like a bull, although in other instances it looks more like a tiger. Some experts have noted its similarity to another mythical creature that was depicted in artwork created by the ancient Maya, but the two cultures are separated by such an enormous amount of time and space that the resemblance must surely be a coincidence. You have to travel to a remote part of Wyoming, USA to see our next discovery with your own eyes, but it's worth the trip. It's an ancient example of Native American rock art carved into the side of a boulder close to the Black Hills and the state's border with South Dakota. The carving is of a human face, although there's also a diamond shape close to the bottom of the boulder. It isn't known whether the diamond is connected to the face or whether it was added at a later time. It's almost impossible to date rock carvings if there's no other archaeological evidence at the scene, which is unfortunately the case here. Because of that, we'll never know who made it, when they made it, or who it's supposed to represent. Some of the people who've seen it say it reminds them of Abraham Lincoln, but that's obviously impossible given what we think we know about its origins. The face is unlike any other Native American carving in the area, though, which makes it something of an anomaly. Speaking of mysterious rock carvings, let's take a look at the Pateleshwar Cave Temple in the Pune district of India. Archaeologists have been able to determine that these rooms were carved from a single, enormous basalt rock during the days of the Rashtrakuta dynasty. That dates the cave temple to the 8th century. The temple would have been in a remote location when it was carved, but Pune has expanded significantly since then, and it's now surrounded by modern structures. It's also now below ground level compared to the town around it, which makes its name very appropriate. Lord Pataleshwar is the god of the underworld in Hindu mythology. Inside the temple, we find enormous pillars along with a nandi bull and a shrine to Lord Shiva. Despite the grandiosity of the structure and the years that must have gone into carving them, it appears that they were left unfinished for reasons unknown. There might have been political or financial upheaval in the region at the time, but a defective line at the back of the temple's sanctum might just as easily have persuaded the builders that their project was a lost cause. In 2014, the world's oldest coin was sold in Germany attracting a price of just under $400,000. That's a high price to pay for a coin that we know very little about. Archaeologists believe it was minted in Turkey around 2,600 years ago, but the words stamped onto its surface are enigmatic. There are two ways of translating the words. One gives us the phrase, I am the badge of Phenis. The other gives us, I am the tomb of light. The confusion comes from the fact that Phanis was the god of light, but Phanis was also a common name in ancient Greece. The coin might have been inspired by divinity or stamped with the name of its wealthy owner. Regardless of that, the coin is worth precisely one stater, the highest coin denominator in Greece's oldest currency. It's made from a metal called electrum, which is an alloy of gold, silver, and copper. This was a common material of the time and was used for household goods as well as coins. The presence of a deer on the coin is as big a mystery as the name, 
But if we assume Fenice was a person, then it might be his family emblem. While many of the things an archaeologist might come across are fascinating, some of them are also grisly. Here's a 2016 discovery from the Phaleron Delta Necropolis in Athens, Greece, which meets that description. You expect to find human skeletons in a necropolis, but what you don't expect to find is 80 skeletons shackled together by iron cuffs around their wrists. The most likely explanation for their plight is that they were the victims of a mass execution, but we'll never know who they were or why they were executed. It seems that they were buried with a degree of respect and reverence, which is unusual given the apparent circumstances of their deaths. The victims were young and appear to have been otherwise healthy at the time of their execution. The violent event happened around 2,700 years ago. Based on this, it's possible that they were supporters of the Athenian noble Cylon, who attempted and failed to stage a coup in Athens in the year 632 BCE. Cylon hid inside a temple of the Acropolis when the coup failed and then escaped with his life, but many of those who supported him paid the ultimate price for their treachery. The enormous megalithic stone circle of Mazora in Morocco has been a puzzle to historians and archaeologists for centuries. Ask any of the locals and they'll tell you that the 167 standing stones arranged in a circle with a diameter of 200 feet mark the grave of a Mauritanian king who died 5,000 years ago. A more fanciful legend says they mark the grave of a giant called Antaeus. Historians aren't convinced by either legend, but they're both excited and confused about the fact that the stone circle is so similar in design to those we see in France and the United Kingdom. The similarity is so strong that it might point to a shared cultural belief between the regions 5,000 years ago something which ought to be impossible based on what we think we know about history. Nevertheless, you can find Pythagorean right-angled triangles in the ratio 12, 35, and 37 here, just as you can at Stonehenge in England, just as the use of the megalithic yard is evident in both places. These ancient cultures may never have spoken to each other, but they clearly shared some of these same very specific ideas. Is the so-called Sitovo inscription in Sitovo, Bulgaria actually an ancient inscription, or is it just a natural rock formation? This is something that archaeologists and experts have been arguing about since it was found inside a cave in 1928. That's almost 100 years ago, and they haven't come close to a definitive answer in all that time. Those who believe that the markings are an inscription claim to be able to prove that they were made around 3,200 years ago. They point to the fact that the marks are arranged in two neat lines and that each of the alleged characters is around 16 inches tall. The rectangular area of the wall that the characters appear on looks like it's been polished at some point in the distant past, and the symbols aren't totally dissimilar to ancient Germanic runes. Archaeologist Alexander Peave, who found the inscriptions on that 1928 expedition, went to his grave believing the marks were created by human hands. The naysayers reject the evidence presented by the believers as flawed and say these marks are nothing more than natural cracks in the rocky walls of the cave. Who do you believe? The ancient Egyptians were fond of making female figurines called paddle dolls and leaving them in tombs. And we have no idea. The practice appears to have started around 4,000 years ago and was widespread across the ancient kingdom. Each doll is made of a flat, intricately decorated piece of wood carved into the shape of a woman, albeit one without a head. Instead of a head, we get plenty of hair sprouting from the neck of the doll, with the hair made from tiny beads strung onto linen threads. Rather than being a doll of the kind a child might play with, the artifacts might have been musical instruments used in percussion. When rattled, the beads in the hair of the dolls make a sound like maracas. They appear more often than not in tombs that are full of references to the ancient Egyptian goddess Hathor, and so they might have been designed to represent her. But that's guesswork rather than theory. Another idea is that they represent dancers in Theban Kenner troops who performed at ceremonies dedicated to Hathor. 
That might be a more likely explanation. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.